So I'm going to talk about Revit walls uh, and Revit 26, 2019. Um, these are generally the same for uh, the other versions as well. So it should be as uh, applicable for those. Um, I'm just going to stick to the basics. If we come over here to the walls, I'm just going to stick to these three. I'll explain them. Um, I right now just opened up a, a the residential template that comes with Revit uh, in the default uh, templates. Um, so it should have generically what we need in there, wall type wise. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is come up here to walls, uh, which would be in the architecture tab, build, panel, and over there is the button. And while I'm in a plan view, which is right here, first floor plan view, I can drop down and we can see the different wall types. Right now, I'll uh, stick to architectural and I'll draw a wall by clicking one point and then clicking another point. And uh, you can see right now the, the settings that are set is height, uh, unconnected, 20 feet so what that's pretty much doing is putting it on the f first floor the plan that we're pretty much in uh, which is reference to the first floor and the height to an unconnected level so it's not really connected to anything so this is not constrained so I can change this to any level and it just goes to that height uh, if I do change this I can constrain it to let's say the roof and you can see that it it uh, kind of grays that out and doesn't let you get into it because it's it's actually while you're drawing it it's connecting to that uh, to the level to the roof level so this is connected to all the le different levels you have so if you have a hundred different levels they'll all pop up here um, so if I'm in this and I press basement it'll air out as you see it's lower than lower than the wall it's pretty much it's it's, it's it's not there's no plus there's no positive point to it so and you can't put a negative number even if you put unconnected we can try but it's going to give us a an error so I'm going to exit out of that but what we can do is say we change this come over here and I'll put depth I'm gonna exit out of that I put depth and then I can now connect to my below um, the, uh, to uh, uh, to the level that I am on currently so which is level one and below that would be foundations uh, basement and bottom of footing uh, so if I press basement you can see now it didn't prompt anything but it's gonna draw it I can't see it. It's going to put it in there. Uh, I come up here to 3D views and we can see that it went uh, below. And it went below 8 foot 6. Um, if I dimension this, so I'm going to go to the west view. just show you so eight foot six and the reason why that is is because and that's what it is from top floor down uh, and if we go back to wall press wall uh, we can see eight foot six it doesn't give us a negative value but that's what it is so just think of it when you change it to depth that's pretty much what that's sh that's changing so uh, from there we have uh, location line and that's pretty much where you're drawing it from so right now we're I'm gonna go back change this to height and it's pretty much the center line so that's wall center line and if we change this huh, to finish face exterior you can see it now draws from the the outer exterior of, of the wall um, so depending on how you're trying to lay these out, you may want that different. Um, 
So I'll press escape just once and then go back to wall center line. And now we have chain. And all that means is, so right now it's checked. Uh, I press the first point, second point, and then it still has me within the wall command to do a second or uh, to keep going on uh, to the next point to point. Um, if I do uncheck that, I can finish it out. And then it kind of just lets me pick another new point for a new wall. So it's not going to be, I can connect it to that. But if I don't want to keep pressing or if I want to change up where I'm drawing the wall, I could do that. Um, I'm going to put chain back on. The offset is just going to offset from the point, the, the, the line, so the location line that I'm drawing from. So if I put two feet in there, it's going to draw two feet from the center line. Um, and then I'm going to press escape once. Then we have radius. So this is pretty cool. Um, offsets uh, uh, voided out there. Um, I'll change this to, let's just keep it three feet. And you can see I pick point there and then point there it's going to give it a three foot radius so th that's briefly what those walls do um we do have structural walls as well and they kind of work in the same exact way and um the only difference really is the parameters that are, are, are in there so you can see this has a bit more structural parameters within it um if you come back to if we escape and then come back to architectural walls. We can see that there's there's not so many structural parameters with it. So this may be the last. But you may want to use structural walls for for load bearing walls or foundation walls, however way. Um, you know, just more specific to structural structural wall types. So the third option is this wall by face. And these are more for uh, if you have masses or generic models uh, for a little bit more complex walls. Uh, you can bring in uh, masses and then and then use that mass to then after you have the wall to pick it and then it will create the wall around it. Uh, I don't have an example right now. Uh, in future videos, I will. But this is a general overview of walls. Uh, we do also have within the wall parameters you can change walls. Um, if they're preloaded in there, there's ways to to create them, but I, I'll touch on that on a on a later video. But I hope this at least gets you started on creating, um, just just getting in there and drawing it, uh, getting used to the buttons and way that uh, Revit works. So I hope it helps. Uh, let me know if there's anything else that uh, you want to learn or if anything I missed. Um, very much appreciated you know if you just comment whatever it is uh like share um and thanks a lot for watching